down, grab myself a marker of some sort. I'll go red marker. I like red. And is that a little too thick? I'll try that one. Let's see how thick that's going to be. The apostrophe, the comma to the top. That's what Gus calls it in psych. You guys ever watch that show, psych? Love that show. Okay, I'm going to scroll. And I'm going to try to describe to you how the apostrophe is used. All right, let's see if I can scroll. Yep, good. One, use, one way the apostrophe is used is to make contractions. Contractions are when you take a word and you smush it. Okay, so you take the word can not and you smush it down in the cafeteria you're talking to your friends you don't say i cannot eat this you say i can't eat this All right you just that when you're talking you smush the words because it just could be so weird to be all formal all the time and so you smush it so you take cannot and you smush it into can't there's an apostrophe in there because you have the let's see what do you have you have the c you have the A, you have the N, and you have the T. So you're missing all these letters. Cannot. So you use the apostrophe to show that you've taken letters out. There's missing letters. Cannot, cannot turns into can't. Did not turns into didn't. We're only missing one letter there. Did not. We're only missing the O. Um, they are turns into there, they are. In fact, it's good for us to pause here for a second because the there apostrophe contraction sounds a lot like the other there and the other there. And you guys, especially amongst the texting generation, you can make this mistake often. They, with an apostrophe, is the same thing as they are because it's missing letters. They are. But anytime you see there with an apostrophe, look at the apostrophe and then read it in your mind as they are. Because you could also see this word there. It has no apostrophe. That's a pronoun. It stands for like, I want to go to their class. Okay, it's a bunch of people that owns something. It's a pronoun. So when you're trying to say that there, there's no apostrophe. Anytime there's an apostrophe in it, it's they are. The other way is when you're pointing to a place. I'm going to go over there, right? There's no apostrophe in there, the place. There is an apostrophe whenever there's a missing letter and you can read it as they are. If you can memorize that one that would help with some of your texting mistakes okay and then the last one i will gets contracted into i'll because the apostrophe is always standing for missing letters okay so that's one use of an apostrophe take the place of missing letters any questions before i scroll Let's see what happens when I scroll. Does it take the writing with it? It does not. How do I get rid of the writing? I do that over here. Clear annotations over here. Uh, delete all annotations. Goodbye. It didn't work. Okay. How about erasing? Yep, that works. Okay. All right. Another way to use apostrophes is to show possession. So we went over one way, which is missing letters. Now we want to talk about possession. Okay. When you own something. You've got something and it's yours and we want to show in the sentence that it's yours. For instance, if we have a house, 
and we have a house, the house belongs to Joe, then we know whose house it is. It's Joe's house. Okay, so that's how we would use the apostrophe. We put the apostrophe after Joe to show that it's his house. And the rule is that you always try to figure out what's the thing being owned and who is owning it. So, in the dog's dish, the dish belongs to the dog. Who or what is the thing who is the owner of something? Somebody scream at who owns something in this one. You can do it. Yeah, the dog. Okay, so we have the dog. The dog is the owner, right? Who or what does the dog own? The dog owns the dish. So as soon as we figure that out, we figure out who the owner is and what he's owning, we're all good because you put the apostrophe after the owner. So it becomes the dog is the owner, apostrophe, and then the thing he owns. So as soon as you know the owner, you're all set. You know exactly where the apostrophe goes. Okay, so it goes owner. And then the apostrophe. Always. All you have to do is figure out who the owner is. The book belongs to the student. Who's the owner? Scream it out. Nice student. The book belongs to the student, so the student is owning this book. So we say the student, put the apostrophe, the student's book. The apostrophe always goes after the owner. All you have to do is figure out who's the owner. The tires belong to the car. The car is the owner. So it's the car's tires. The phone belongs to James. Notice James. The name ends in an S, but the apostrophe always goes after the owner. James is the owner. The apostrophe is going to go after James. So it becomes James's phone because the apostrophe went after James. All you got to do is figure out who the owner is. The last one, the bed for two dogs. Trying to trick you here. What's the thing that's being owned by the two dogs? The bed. The bed. Who owns the bed? Dogs. Yeah, dogs. Uh, notice the way dogs ends in an S. The apostrophe goes after the owners. The owner's two dogs, so it would be dogs bed. The dog's bed, the apostrophe goes after the S because it was two dogs that own it. All you have to do is figure out who the owner is. That's, your, that's all you have to do. Okay, let's see what I got for another slide. Let's see if I can get rid of all this junk. There we go. More junk. More junk. There we go. All cleared up. So the rule is that the apostrophe always goes after the owner. If it's one dog, the apostrophe goes after the owner. If it's two dogs, has to be go, goes after the owner. If it's one woman, the apostrophe goes after the owner. If it's two women, the apostrophe goes after the owner. Just figure out who the owner is. That's all you got to do. Wait, are there any more slides? Oh, here we go. So, for instance, we figured out that the owner in the house belongs to Joe is Joe. The owner in the dish belonged to the dog is a dog. The book belonged to the student. The student's the owner. The tires belong to the car. 
car owns the tires. The phone belongs to James. James has a phone. And again, the bed for two dogs, it was two dogs that own that bed. There is something you have to be careful of. There are things called possessive pronouns. You know the pronouns of uh, I, uh, me, he, okay, we. You know pronouns. They stand for, you know, like something else or someone else, right? There are possessive pronouns. His wallet. Uh, uh, it's fur. Uh, that book is ours. Um, hers. Uh, uh, the purse is hers. Theirs. Uh, uh, that That house is theirs, yours. Um, I want to take yours. Oops, take yours because mine is broken. Okay, these are possessive pronouns. They don't get extra apostrophes. You wouldn't say. His is 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 with an apostrophe. You wouldn't say our our is is. The book belongs to our. You wouldn't do that. These are possessive or um, possessive pronouns. The one thing I want you to watch out for is it's when it has no apostrophe. It's a possessive pronoun. Uh, I stepped on the uh, uh, worm and I squished its body. It's, it's possessive already all by itself. So let's see if I can erase this stuff and scroll to the last one, which is when do you know it's its? with an apostrophe or it's without an apostrophe? And the answer is that it is like this, it's 50. Yeah, we're gonna see them. As soon as we hear the noise, we'll go after the noise people, okay? It's with an apostrophe is always missing a letter. It is always, it is. Right there where the apostrophe is, is the missing I. It's without an apostrophe is always a pronoun, possessive pronoun. It, with an apostrophe is always missing a letter. Just memorize that. That's it. That's it for us today. We can go to lunch. When we get back, we have a quiz.